I think we can start. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Benedetto Lepori, uh, and I'm chairing this uh, uh, seminar series. We are now at the 16th RIS research seminar. Uh, and I have the pleasure to present uh, uh, the Giovanni Cerulli and Antonio Zinilli of uh, CNR, IRCRES. Uh, we will present a paper on link prediction in knowledge networks using exogenous and endogenous attributes and machine learning approaches. So we are in between uh, topics in uh, science studies. So uh, the analyzing knowledge networks on the one hand uh, and uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, informatics and machine learning approaches on the other hand, which, is, uh, which are clearly a new frontier in uh, this kind of uh, analysis. And as usual, we have an outstanding uh, discussion, Mike Telval, University of Wolverhampton, one of the main specialists on uh, uh, informatics and especially on social media and uh, uh, analysis of science using internet sources. And I, I, I would like also uh, to thank the CNR uh, communication team and particularly Alessia for managing professionally this event. Rules of the game are as usual. There will be a presentation, something like 40, 45 minutes. Uh, then uh, rejoined by Mike. Then we will have a first short response uh, round and then we will open for uh, um, an open discussion. You can intervene either by posting a question on the chat uh, by raising your hand or simply by opening your camera and uh, talking. We are in a small group anyway. So with all this, I want to give uh, to the presenters the word for uh, uh, your paper. Thank you. Thank you, Benedetto. Hello, everybody. Okay, I share my screen. Uh, you should see my, my screen. Yes. Do you see my screen? Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Benedetto. Um, uh, okay, uh, in, in, this in this talk, we present uh, um, the paper Link Prediction Knowledge Network Using Exogenous and uh, Endogenous Attributes, a Machine Learning Approach. Uh, I will give uh, uh, the first part of uh, uh, of this talk, then uh, Giovanni Cerulli will present uh, the methodology, uh, results, and uh, uh, conclusions. Um, in this paper, we propose a supervised machine learning um, to predict partnership um, formation between uh, uh, university in uh, uh, between uh, um, European universities. Um, we focus on uh, uh, successful R&D um, projects uh, funded by Horizon 2020 uh, program in three um, different um, ERC domains, social science and humanities, physical and engineering sciences, and life sciences. Uh, the period we consider um, uh, goes from uh, 2014 and 2014. Um, uh, 16. Uh, this paper has a twofold um, objective. Uh, on the one hand, from uh, a methodological contribution, uh, we want to uh, employ and compare different uh, supervised machine learning algorithms uh, for link prediction. And uh, the, uh, in the other end, uh, from a policy side, uh, we want to provide to the decision makers new uh, perspectives um, on how to assess the different dynamics of the collaboration among uh, European um, academic organization in this, uh, in this case, um, Promoting and uh, um, the, the promoting the integration between the different uh, actors belonging to the uh, European research uh, area. The um, studies on network dynamics um, 
increased in the in the last years um, in different scientific uh, uh, fields um, and the formation or prediction in this uh, talk we want to uh, we is, um, we use uh, this uh, two terms um, we overlap uh, these two terms in this uh, in this talk um, the deformation or prediction of links uh, uh, between the different actors um, engaged in the knowledge and innov innovation network um, has grown in importance in the in this last um, period. Uh, in this sense, uh, we are able um, to to build in the. Um, um, uh, nowadays, it's possible to, um, we are able to build uh, a bridge between uh, um, different economic and uh, um, social theories uh, and more data driven um, uh, approaches, um, data driven methodologies, thanks to new computational and machine learning uh, tools. Uh, for this reason, uh, an additional contribution that uh, we would like to provide uh, um, with this paper is to join um, theory and data driven, but also in this case, two statistical techniques, um, network analysis and uh, uh, machine learning in a specific context, namely uh, knowledge and innovation um, studies. Uh, because in, in the, in this moment, uh, um, even if uh, a number of works have um, provided um, evidence on uh, the, um, the, the, the most important, the crucial importance of connection between the different organization or actors in general, in overall, uh, most of the, these studies uh, um, are uh, um, based on uh, um, traditional linear view uh, of the research and innovation uh, process. Uh, in particular, in this uh, paper, we want to um, estimate the probability uh, that a, um, a university, let's say A, uh, collaborates with uh, another university, let's say B, uh, by considering their uh, idiosyncratic attributes or um, in terms of network analysis, exogenous attributes, uh, as well as the past central, um, the past centrality and the sharing of common neighbors. In this case, we call them um, endogenous uh, attributes, okay? In this case, we want to predict the connection between the different European universities considering uh, exogenous and endogenous uh, attributes. In this slide, uh, you can read the, the question we want to answer. Um, can collaboration joint projects uh, be uh, accurately predicted by machine learning? Um, we want to uh, respond to this uh, uh, question. In, um, um, we, we try to, to respond to this question in the first part of uh, our uh, paper. Um, in this case, we set, um, we set out the out of sample uh, performance uh, accuracy of uh, um, the different, uh, um, of, of such prediction using different machine learning algorithms. Um, the accuracy is uh, um, clearly um, conditional uh, on the features, on the different attributes that we consider in our uh, analysis. Um, as already said, the features we use are endogenous and exogenous. Um, the second question uh, that we want to explore in this paper is which is the predicting power of endogenous and exogenous characteristic of node? Um, we will respond to this question um, by uh, separating the contribution of uh, uh, endogenous and uh, um, exogenous attributes. We create in this, uh, in this paper two different models, a full model and a model with only exogenous variable. In this way, we are able to uh, discriminate between uh, um, the importance of network uh, properties, the network characteristics, 
compared to the external factors, the exogenous um, characteristics, to the link prediction. Um, and to do this, so we created two different models. Uh, the third question is uh, what features have a larger impact in predicted links and in what direction do they uh, act? Uh, in this third question, we, um, we study the feature importance uh, on the link prediction. In few words, what are the most important, the main variables, uh, endogenous and exogenous, that explain the link formation, link prediction between the um, European University, considering the, um, the, the, the joint project between 2014 and 2016. With respect to the, the second, um, to the second question, we want to, um, we want to understand how well we are able to predict uh, um, links or edges uh, um, by considering uh, a, a full model and a model with the exogenous attributes, I said before. Uh, in this way, we are able to um, predict, uh, to make a prediction uh, for newcomers universities and uh, incumbent uh, universities. Here it's possible to, to see uh, an example to explain this, uh, um, this part. Uh, for um, newcomers university, uh, we, uh, don't know, we don't know the endogenous uh, information, the endogenous characteristics, because the newcomers universities uh, have never participated um, in, a, a framework, uh, in a framework program. Uh, in this case, we don't know the past, the past centrality of this, uh, um, of this uh, university uh, in this specific network. Uh, for the incumbents, um, universities, uh, um, we know um, everything, exogenous and endogenous attributes. Um, because uh, incumbents, universities uh, are the um, the, the university, the organization that have already participated to a framework program, okay, in the, in the past. And we have, in this case, the information uh, about the past connection, the past links between um, this type of uh, university. Okay, um, the, 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 the link prediction, um, in general, is a problem uh, addressed through different uh, perspectives. Uh, um, network science, uh, in particular in um, statistical mechanics, um, referring mainly to physicists, uh, um, but uh, the, the, the link prediction is also uh, in addressed uh, um, in terms of machine learning, so with uh, a data-driven approach. Um, most of the theoretical and uh, um, applied study in network science uh, um, have focused on the, the underlying um, patterns uh, of, uh, um, of approaches uh, formation on, of connection uh, between the different nodes, um, between the different organization or region, et cetera, et cetera. It's possible to have different actors. Um, uh, scientists, for example, was in Strogatz or, or Barbashi or uh, Giannotti study, uh, studied the mechanics that explain the link formation, okay? Um, uh, I refer in this sense, for example, to the literature on, uh, um, on uh, preferential attachment and power law distribution, okay? Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, uh, social science and uh, um, economic studies, um, economic sciences have uh, adopted some approaches and applied uh, these different, uh, the different techniques to study the relation between people, uh, organizations, uh, institution, or uh, at regional level. And in this sense, I refer the, the literature on stochastic hector-oriented uh, model, 
um, or uh, ERGM, the exponential random graph model, for, for the study of link formation in the different uh, contexts in social sciences and uh, um, economics. Uh, in knowledge and uh, um, innovation networks, uh, um, such as co-publication or joint project collaboration or co-patenting, um, for example, uh, there are different studies at a regional uh, level, uh, have studied the link formation, uh, mainly use this uh, two approach I mentioned before, uh, stochastic actor-oriented model and exponential random um, graph model. There is a still um, limited literature on the application of machine learning in knowledge uh, in knowledge, knowledge network. From the, and we want to um, fill this uh, this this gap. Um, from the point of view of uh, the theoretical framework, uh, we follow the literature coming from uh, network sciences um, for the uh, endogenous processes. Um, um, that generate, that create, that form a, a, a network. Um, while with regard to uh, exogenous uh, attributes, uh, um, we want to follow the papers from organizational and uh, regional and regional uh, um, study. Um, um, studies or paper um, dealing with uh, R&D and innovation uh, um, networks have uh, highlighted um, the, the, that actors have a great probability to form a connection uh, when there are common neighbors. Uh, Newman, in this case, um, um, is a, a study this, the, the, the networks um, and the importance of common neighbors uh, to create a connection. Um, other several studies identified the Jacquard coefficients uh, or uh, other centrality measures, um, such as the degree centrality or between the centrality or other um, uh, measures uh, um, as uh, um, the, the cosine similarity uh, as power factor uh, as an important factor uh, affecting uh, the link uh, the link prediction uh, in this case there are different uh, um, authors for example uh, abbassi or shibata that, uh, that indicated the importance of centrality measure to explain preferential attachment in scientific co-publication or co-patenting um, uh, co-patenting network um, on the other hand, uh, there are papers from higher, uh, higher education studies, uh, um, uh, research policy or regional study, and uh, we have uh, different uh, uh, experts in this uh, sense, Benedetto, I don't know if there is Thomas, who studied the participation in the, the framework programs uh, of private or public uh, organization or from a regional perspective. In this sense, these studies observe the importance of some university, uh, university characteristics of regional characteristics, uh, such as the size of uh, uh, an organization. Uh, in the, the, the literature says that uh, the larger the university, larger organization tend to attract more requests for collaboration. Um, the reputation uh, is uh, a, a university um, of an university is an important factor in uh, attracting a new connection. Um, this is a sort of preferential attachment um, based on the reputation and authority of a specific node in the, in the network. Um, the uh, gross domestic product uh, of the region um, uh, in which a uh, university is uh, located is an important uh, variables uh, to uh, facilitate new collaboration um, since they can exploit the, the, the literature say that in this case the GDP is important because um, organization uh, in a, a region with an high GDP tend to exploit the uh, agglomeration effects 
uh, more than uh, uh, peripheral uh, regions uh, in terms of um, gross domestic product. Um, these are some of the factors that Bleacher's uh, has identified um, as uh, important, as uh, uh, crucial um, in collaboration and access to the uh, framework uh, program, to the different uh, uh, project in, uh, um, in Horizon 2020, for example, or in previous framework programs. Um, as, um, as said before, um, we employed a network science perspective in this study. Um, we have a set of nodes at the uh, European uh, University and a set of, uh, of links, uh, a set of uh, connection between the, the, the different uh, universities. Um, that uh, uh, indicates the connection um, between the university through common projects in uh, Horizon 2020. Um, we use the information uh, in, for three years, 2014 to 2016. Uh, in this example, um, this is an example to facilitate um, the, 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 to, to show the, the, the aim of this, uh, of this paper. Uh, in this case, node F here um, has a zero link probability with uh, all the, the other nodes of the network, except for node B and node, um, a, a node D. Uh, the link with node B has a 70% uh, likelihood to uh, occur, um, while uh, against a 30% um, of the link with the node uh, with the node D. In this case, we can conclude that the uh, new university, um, in this case, is a um, a newcomer. For example, um, in this case, the university F has greater probability uh, to collaborate with the university B uh, in a new round of uh, the research funding um, program. For each university uh, in the network, we consider, uh, we calculate all possible uh, link probabilities with the other university, taking into uh, account uh, the accuracy of estimated probability using um, several machine learning um, predictive algorithms, um, the future importance um, uh, that influence the, uh, the accuracies. Um, in particular, uh, I said before, uh, we want to separate uh, the contribution of endogenous and exogenous variable uh, to control how um, accurate um, the link prediction, um, the, the accuracy of link prediction for these two type of uh, attributes. Uh, to understand the, the difference between uh, um, incumbents and newcomers uh, universities. Um, this is an important aspect uh, of, this, uh, uh, of this paper, then Giovanni will speak about uh, uh, this. Um, here, uh, in this slide, we show uh, the, the step uh, um, we uh, follow to implement the different uh, uh, analysis. We use three different RISIS uh, data sets, uh, the UPRO data set uh, that has uh, information about our project uh, and information about the project in the different uh, framework programs, uh, RISIS Ether that is a database on the European higher education um, institution. In this database, there are different uh, variables uh, at uh, um, university level and CWTS publication uh, from, um, yes, uh, that is a full copy of, uh, of, web, of, uh, of web of science. Um, we compare the performance of the uh, proposed uh, learning algorithms um, for uh, two different models, for, uh, or for a full, full model and uh, one model for, um, for only the exogenous attribute. Then we calculated the average partial effects and uh, the uh, elasticities. 
for, uh, for the different uh, um, features, for the different uh, uh, variables. Um, these are the variables we have considered in our study um, about uh, uh, the endogenous uh, features we have the between the centrality and jacquard coefficients. Between uh, centrality um, is uh, a measure that indicates the frequency that a university uh, acts, acts uh, as a connection between um, a pair of uh, other university. Um, an university with a, an eye between us as a larger uh, influence uh, on the general network on the um, on the uh, yes the, the general network and can control the resource and uh, information um, the jacquard coefficient um, is the uh, is a ratio is a, is a proportion um, of common neighbors um, uh, in the total over the total number of neighbors for each uh, uh, node. Uh, this uh, measure, this index uh, uh, is a maximum um, when uh, neighbors um, are common to both uh, nodes. Um, this measure uh, uh, is a, a proxy uh, for belonging to the same uh, community. These are the two variables we, uh, the, the two endogenous variable, variables we have uh, considered. Then we consider uh, the, the exogenous uh, features, uh, regional gross domestic product um, from 2014 and 2016. Uh, this is a measure at the regional level. Um, university uh, located in regions with uh, um, a nice gross domestic product um, are likely to hold um, the capacity and uh, resources to uh, acquire uh, public funding for collaborate for uh, for the um, for the partnership in in uh, horizon 2020 um, because in this case is an important variable for uh, um, because the, the the university in, in high um, in uh, uh, region with an higher GDP tend to exploit agg agglomeration effects. And another uh, exogenous uh, variables uh, um, is the core funding that is indicated the, the overall government funding available for a, a university. Um, this is a sort of uh, lever to generate additional, um, uh, additional external funding. Um, uh, university with uh, a lower um, um, level of public funding are more um, likely to seek to seek funding um, coming from external resources. Um, another variable we have considered uh, is the citation score, that is the the average um, number of citation of uh, um, uh, uh, of a university's um, publication. Uh, this variable is normalized by field and, uh, um, and year. Um, this variable is a proxy of uh, uh, university reputation. Um, finally, um, we have uh, considered the number of st uh, students by uh, ERC uh, domain. Um, this is a proxy of uh, university size uh, um, that we have uh, rescaled within the, the three um, um, ERC domains, social science and humanities, physical and engineering, and uh, life sciences. Uh, I give the floor to, to Giovanni for the machine learning uh, methodology. I close. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Yeah? Yes. Okay, and can you see my screen? Because I have to, uh, okay. Um, thank you very much, Antonio. And I'm going to um, take the lead of this uh, presentation. Well, um, what Antonio said basically was uh, that we wanted to, what we want to do is exactly to um, predict uh, the link probability between two nodes for us two nodes are uh, two universities, right? And we're going to use some predictive tools. 
And the machine learning is, of course, our, um, I would say, a workhorse of, uh, in the literature of uh, uh, predictive analytics and predictive methods. So it's particularly suited for this task. Okay, uh, the main idea is to use different uh, approaches, uh, uh, machine learning approaches in a, a supervised learning context in which we are uh, basically in the case of classification because our categorical outcome is a binary outcome, having a link or not having a link in which our data set is made basically of in the one single row, in one single observation, we have a pair. And this pair is a pair of uh, two universities. And this university can get a zero when they are not connected and a one when they are connected. So we would like to predict whether or not two out of sample, out of sample universities can be finally linked based on the characteristics that Antonio uh, showed before. So basically, this is our main task. And we use uh, several different uh, machine learning methods, and we use a specific architecture for doing that. And our learning architecture is based on um, the main idea is that of uh, generating the best prediction uh, using three different learning procedures. One is a learning over the tuning parameters of each machine learning method. I don't have the time to speak about it, of course. But you have to think about a machine learning method or machine learning prediction capacity as a something depending on some hyperparameters called also complexity parameters or tuning parameters. And we have to look for the best one by searching over a, over a grid of them until we find the, those that are the most predictive. And then we are going also to increase our prediction ability using a meta-learning approach. In other words, by exploring different kind of a of a methods and put them together in a super learner as we do for the estimation of the average partial effect. And all this uh, is meant to uh, basically uh, to improve prediction. The third level of, uh, a, of, a predi of a prediction ability is uh, of learning is a, a, a new the learning from new incoming information. Of course, uh, we are not working now on this, strictly speaking, because this would, would require to collect new information, I would say, months by months or uh, day by day, uh, sorry, uh, years by years, and then uh, uh, come up with a uh, um, uh, larger extent of information that can be used for improving even uh, more and more the uh, level of prediction. Okay. Um, the very center of uh, machine learning is that of uh, trying to increase prediction in an out of sample fashion. In other words, we would like to understand whether if we are going to uh, come across two new, uh, 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 um, two new uh, universities, we would like to be able to predict uh, their, the likelihood that this two university are going to share a partnership. We would like to do this in the best, at the best we can do. So in other words, we would like to tune the model in a proper way. And for this uh, kind of uh, task, we use cross-validation. Cross-validation is the, again, is the most important method in machine learning. And is the one that provides us the ability to generate the best out of sample performance of our learners. And this is what we are going to do here in order to increase prediction um, at, at our best, I would say. Okay, uh, I directly go to the main results. Uh, as uh, Antonio said, we have two models to compare. The first model is a full model containing both uh, exogenous and endogenous attributes. So in other words, this is going to give us basically the likelihood that you uh, the, the ability to, to predict link among universities when these universities are already part of the network. In other words, I would say that they are incumbents. And in this case, we see that the level of accuracy is quite high, is in general around 92%, which is quite uh, relevant for us. 
It means that given these, the, 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 the entire bundle of characteristics, exogenous and endogenous, on average, we are going to guess whether two universities are going to form a partnership or no with a 92% of likelihood, which is quite high now in our opinion, especially because we are working in a, in a social science context. So this is a pretty uh, an interesting result. What's going on when we're going to delete uh, or exclude, to be more precise, um, the uh, endogenous components, the endogenous are the network's attributes, and just, rely, just by relying on the exogenous one. In other words, what's going on when we are, we, we want to predict the behavior, the, the, the partnership behavior or of uh, non-incumbent or newcomers universities that are not part of the, of the network so that we do not know for them or the network information that we, uh, we know about those that are already part of the network. Well, very interestingly, even in this case, we see that in this case, the level of the accuracy drops down by more or less 30 points, 35, depending on a, on the on the method, but in general we are able to to to, to get around the 61, uh, 60 sorry 60 uh, percent of accuracy in this case, which is a a, a big drop in our in our in our uh, in, in our um, opinion, but then at the same time uh, witnesses that. Uh, the, the role of the of the network component are really important for describing the probability to uh, to lay a new link. So uh, endogenous components are really relevant, and we can immediately catch this relevance exactly by comparing these two probabilities. As you can see, the behavior of the learner is more or less similar, although some have, uh, um, I would say. Uh, worse performance, like in this case, the nearest neighbor. But anyway, more or less, uh, both in terms of uh, average accuracy and standard errors, the behavior of the learner is comparable. Well, this is, of course, when I speak about it, I'm speaking about the, in this case, of the uh, of social science. Okay, okay. So I distinguish between the three uh, different domains. In the social science, we have this situation. But when we go through uh, the analysis of the physics and engineering, we see that the prediction accuracy is larger even when we're going to uh, take into account all the exogenous components. And this is a very good news. It's very good news because now we, we are able to, um, to um, predict the probability of a link with a 70% likelihood, which is quite high. And if we consider a, 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 a life sciences, we see that the situation is more or less the same as the physics and engineering, a bit less 68. What does it mean? Uh, Giovanni, sorry, just to, to tell you that you have 10 minutes left. 10 minutes, okay, great, it's good. Uh, 10 minutes, it's fine. <laughs> However, I will say that in this case, we have a, compared to the social sciences, we have a larger ability to predict out of sample, even when, even when we are renouncing to uh, knowing about the network uh, structure of the uh, or natural attributes of the of the node. Why? Because it is clear that there is much more uncertainty in the social sciences in the pattern in which they are going to generate the links than. Uh, happen in the in physics or in the life sciences or in engineering, and this is of course uh, explained by the knowledge base and the uh, in the role of infrastructures, as I'm going to explain later on in this uh, uh, peculiar uh, uh, peculiar fields in which, for example, some costs related to the partnership are much larger, so there is much more path dependence, and path dependence help. Prediction, that's the point that we make here. Okay, having said that, it is important also to, this is the first result that we get basically, okay? And this is, in our opinion, an interesting result, a pretty expected, but the, uh, we think that it is measured with some, uh, 
with some uh, the, the novelty also to measure that, right? The second point that we want to add to the literature is feature importance. And even in this case, there is a big novelty for our in our perspective here, because generally in machine learning, feature importance is estimated, is measured using the contribution to prediction of each single feature. We do that, but we go beyond that. Because what we want to do is to provide what? Not only the weight of each feature in explaining the loss of the of the of a loss of a prediction ability, but we want also to uh, to define to to be able to describe the direction in which each single feature can change can uh, uh, can change the, the the probability to lay a new link, and this is made uh, this is made possible using uh, the average partial effect. The average partial effect is nothing but the derivative of the link probability to each single X by taking all the other Xs, all the other features um, constant to their mean level. This is the formula, right? In a standard linear regression, this is the beta. This is nothing but the beta in the linear regression. But of course, when we are working with very greedy methods, very um, non-parametric methods like uh, those that we use here, because machine learning are basically highly non-parametric models, well, we have to estimate them computationally. We don't have, we don't have, we don't have uh, just one single values, but we have computationally uh, 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 generated the, these derivatives and then come up with, uh, with uh, uh, the, final, uh, the, the final structures and patterns of this object. Well, we are so interested in the, the increment and decrement of the link probability when we're going to change of one, uh, uh, one of, 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 for example, of, of a certain value of a certain uh, increment, the axis, the feature by taking all the other feature uh, uh, constant. Well, well a, because the average partial effect takes into account an infinitesimal change, this is not very nice for a uh, interpretation because interpretation for us is very important. We prefer to work directly with elasticities. So the elasticity is going to explain a percentage change in the probability when I'm going to generate a percentage, 1%, 1% increase in the, uh, in, in the feature we are considering. So it's much better for interpreting the result. So the elasticity is this one. This is the classical formula of an elasticity that we can find in whatever uh, microeconometric models or, or books, sorry, or whatever, okay? Results. Okay, results are a first presented uh, globally. Uh, results are basically, uh, what, what you can see here on the, left, on the left panel is nothing but the pattern of the probability a uh, link as a function of a single feature, right? By taking all the other constant to their mean, this bar is the mean. And this is the elasticity estimation. And the elasticity is going to take into account the curvature of this, the shape, I would say, of this, uh, of this, uh, a, a, uh, of these curves at each point. So it's the derivative, but in a relative way, in, in other words, okay? So what we see here is the behavior of the uh, uh, of a, a total core budget and mean uh, citation score, GDP, and all the other indices. Uh, and what we can see here is the is the pattern of the probability. And we have this for all this uh, for the three domains, right? Okay. Uh, let this let me sum up a bit of the results in a few minutes. Because of course we have a lot of information, but we would like to draw just the, uh, the information that is relevant for us. In particular, I would like to first of all focus on the role played by the core funding, and we see that we have three different patterns for this uh, important variable, important attribute, in the three domains, with the social sciences showing a strict uh, uh, decreasing pattern 
compared to the LS with a parabola pattern and the um, physical engineers that seems to be a bit a cubic form. And we believe that this difference has to do with the particular base knowledge base of these two, three different domains and with some constraints that we find here. In fact, when we have university characterized by a very small total uh, core budget, it's very likely that they need more resources and they engage partnerships and projects shared with other partners in order to attract funds that they do not get directly from the government. As long as the total budget increases and the government is more generous in providing funds, the need to get in touch with other, with other institutions and other university uh, and the incentive to do this get, gets down and is much relevant as you can see. This doesn't happen exactly in the same way in more hard science-based knowledge uh, domain. And for example, in the case of, um, uh, um, in the case of uh, uh, life science, we see a parabola form. What does it mean? At the beginning, we have this, let me express this as um, a budget constraint phenomenon. But at the, when we are going to increase the core budget, and so probably the government is more generous in providing funds, well, immediately we see that there are some scale complementarities. In other words, we are generating large projects here. We are considering institution characterized by big labs, by um, big projects, also projects that last uh, over the years, over the years. And these require partnerships because uh, of course, this is something that cannot be just, uh, um, just uh, um, a, a, a run and uh, and uh, um, and use the uh, on their own, but they need this university. They need uh, some partners to share, and uh, uh, of course, this is part of the of the knowledge base of this of this uh, a, a, a of this kind of uh, a, of uh, of universities. Uh, and for physics and engineering, something similar happens. Even if a very large level, we see a reduction. But anyway, even in this case, a, the infrastructure's effect at a certain point binds and is very relevant. So that we see again an increase at a certain point with a different uh, threshold. Well, another interesting point is about the uh, behavior of a mean citation index. The mean citation score or index, as for all domains, a U shaped form. And this is interesting because it means that when uh, a university is particularly weak or has a low level of uh, the quality of, uh, of publication, so probably is not an uh, uh, extraordinary high level of university, I, I would say, well, the need for uh, get link is higher. And we see that, uh, but decreasing with the level of the mean citation. So here is very, it's very likely at the low level that they are going to engage into uh, links and partnerships. But as long as we are going to increase the level of a mean citation score, we see that there is a, at a very high level, I would say, again, an increase in this probability. So it is very likely that uh, there is uh, at a very high level of uh, the quality of the output of the research, the need to collaborate and is not only the need, but I would say that it is the structural way some university, prestigious university, are uh, probably uh, uh, are probably uh, running their own uh, business. Giovanni, and, could uh, you go to the conclusions, yes. please? Uh, yes, just uh, uh, one minute. And uh, for the between centrality, so what we can see here uh, that there is a sort of uh, homophily. It says that. Uh, uh, weaker are probably uh, because are uh, 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 are uh, uh, having contacts and links with the weaker and stronger with stronger universities. So the what we see in the between centralities is as long as uh, uh, the two nodes, the two universities are very central, it's very 
unlikely that they are going to collaborate. And this is a sort of cognitive dissimilarity. And it depends on the fact that the two universities that are very strong because very central in the network are like hubs in two different domains, in two different areas like arch archipelagos, right? So the main idea is that uh, this is what to return this kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, pattern. And also the pattern of the Jaggard index is also interesting and in some way expected. The main idea is that as long as the similarity between the two universities is larger, they do not need to get in touch because there is just a doubling of the same resources and the same uh, uh, knowledge base. So this is where complementarity is relevant. It is more likely that two very different uh, universities with different neighbors in this case, so belonging probably to two different uh, uh, a, to different environments, it's very likely that they are not linked in this case. And this depends on the fact that uh, uh, they are very, very poorly similar. When they are poorly similar, it's much, it's much more likely that they are going to have a link because there are complementarities and the abilities to put together uh, different resources and the different uh, abilities that each single university does not have at, uh, at its disposal uh, internally. That's the main point. So it's a cognitive complementarity that matters here. So we get to the conclusion and we finally, we may say that we have done two things, basically. The first is to provide the probability of a link for an incumbent, so a university in the network, already in the network, and for a newcomer, a new universities outside of the network that would like to participate in the network. So there is an interesting uh, uh, ask. This is an interesting aspect because this is something that uh, uh, can be used also strategically by policymakers to understand how much they can be able to predict this uh, uh, new formational links. The second one is the ability to catch the importance of the of the uh, of the feature driving driving the probability of uh, getting a link and i forgot to say that because of course uh, we are short of time but anyway the role played by the core funding is very important because if we see at uh, the probabilities the giovanni probability please go factor. go to the conclusions uh, and don't go back uh, around yes. sorry and finally yes and the finally uh, we have tried to understand the direction of the effect of the different features by signaling that uh, Jacquard between centrality and mean citation have very stable partners um, over the different uh, domains. That's and that's all. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry for uh, being uh, strict on the time, but uh, uh, the goal of these seminars is also to be able to discuss, and we have a distinguishing discussant. So, Mike, it's uh, to you the word. Okay, thanks very much, Benedetto, and thank you very much for the presentation. That was really interesting. I really enjoyed listening to that. Um, so, I thought you had uh, really good results. I uh, very clearly explained presentation. You very clearly explained all the all the steps that you did, and um, a very impressive results over ninety percent accuracy. Um, and um, I particularly like the fact that you took time at the end to to derive some uh, real world interpretations of your findings. So uh, that was uh, that I found that particularly useful and um, reasonably persuading. I think Re reasonably persuasive. At the end, the uh, the uh, real world uh, um, interpretations of your data. So that was fantastic. So I've got a, a number of uh, questions. Um, so some some of them some of them technical, and most of them technical. I think really um, because the explanations were clear. And oh, just a general comment. So, um, so uh, one of your big findings was was that the endogenous information was uh, critical 
to getting high accuracy for the predictions. And uh, just as a personal comment, that kind of makes sense to me because you can have universes that are good at collaborating and they collaborate a lot. And those would be the ones that you would expect to make new collaborations. So in my university, there's, there's in fact, there's one person who knows everybody in the entire world and um, collaborates with pretty much anyone in Europe. So um, I go to any university and they've always heard of him. And um, often the people in the university tell me that they're his best friend. Um, whereas uh, I imagine other universities don't have super collaborators. So they're, they uh, probably won't collaborate with anything with anyone new. So, so the endogenous information would capture the fact that you've got people in the university that are good collaborators or lots of people in the university that are good at collaborating maybe for big universities. So that makes sense to me. Um, but still, I, I think accuracy over 90%, it doesn't, it doesn't um, seem possible to me. It seems that's uh, too high an accuracy for the task. So I think I'm not understanding somehow what you're doing um, well enough. So I would imagine in a, in a big network, there would be, um, for, for the type of collaboration you're looking at, there would be a very low probability of any two random universities collaborating in the future. Maybe if you look at all the universities in Europe, maybe the chance of a, a new pair of universities collaborating is, I don't know, one in 50 for uh, a call. And I would think it would be very hard to get uh, to predict that with uh, a probability of above 90%. So my guess, if I'd have guessed what probability you would get for that, I would guess on the type of measure you're using closer to 55%, I would think it's a, a difficult task. So I think I don't understand something about what how you're setting up the task. And um, so maybe it's um, on one of your slides, you mentioned that you undersampled the uh, no link collaborations. And I'm wondering if this is what it is. So did you, so my first question is, did you undersample the no link collaborations for the training data or just for the evaluation? So that's my first question. And um, if you undersampled it for the training data, um, do you think that affects the, the results of what you're doing, the accuracy uh, of your system, if it was applied to date, just the raw data and not undersampled data? And um, my second question is, I, um, I'm not quite understanding. I think I understand what your input data is, but I don't, um, I'm not confident about it. So when you showed the input data, you showed tables of, um, or, or types of data that apply to individual universities. So individual university set centrality, um, size of individual universities. But what you're trying to pre predict is for pairs of universities. So you don't have any data for information about a pair of universities. So I think your information, your input data must be um, kind of doubled up. So you, so each row of your input data would be all the statistics for, for University A, plus all the universities, statistics, the same statistics repeated for University B. And then you try to predict whether they're connected based on, well, the machine learning somehow identifies the commonalities or the combinations of the same in the university level statistic. So I'd just like you to um, confirm that. Um, so another technical question. So I just wonder what you're using to, um, what system you're using to do the machine learning. So that'd be interesting to know. So I'm, I'm guessing scikit-learn on Python, um, but I saw um, Dino Maynard here. So you might be using gate, but I think that's more for um, natural language processing. So probably not. And, um, and I liked your average partial effect calculations. I haven't seen that before. So that was really interesting. And you got a lot of um, uh, useful information from that. So I just wondered how you implemented that in practice. Is it within your system or have you had to write extra code? to um, implement that. And, um, oh, okay, one final uh, question. Um, 
So have you compared your results? So the results on the last few slides, the, um, the differently shaped graphs, have you compared those results with related results on um, related topics? So I've seen a U-shaped graph, for example, in some um, citation analysis context. And I wondered if you'd found graphs showing uh, similar shapes or displaying similar relationships in obviously not the same context that you're doing, but in other similar contexts. So that would be uh, interesting to know. OK, so that's it from me. So thanks again for a wonderful talk and a very clear talk. And congratulations on the findings as well. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Uh, I think you you could answer, but just uh, in, in five minutes, since we have questions also from the audience. I'm sorry, I'm going to respond. No. Then possibly you can intervene if you want. OK, I'm going to respond. Yes, yes. OK. Yes. Thank you very much, Mike, to your, uh, the question you raise are absolutely appropriate and, uh, and you perfectly right in all the point you, uh, you made. The first point is training and data set under sampling. Yes, we use the under sampling in the two, in both uh, the test and the, and the, uh, and the training. And also uh, this need was needed. I, I didn't have the time to speak about it, but because the number of zeros is very large, of course, in this network, we call that the network is sparse because the matrix is full of zeros and, uh, and just a few, a few ones <laughs> are there. So this is the problem. So, uh, and the, 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 this is the typical way which we're going to, we do when we have this unbalanced situation among ones and zeros. The second point is uh, um, a um, point, uh, uh, okay, per, yes. Well, a, yes, you're right. The best thing would be to have information that are uh, pay by pair, pair by pair, you know, I mean, a, a per specific information. How, how uh, did we work? In other words, what, what we did was to, to rely on an average of the two nodes characteristics in order to have a per characteristic. Of course, this strategy may not be the best. The best would be to have something that uh, links, that, that in some way belongs to the, the per as it is. But of course, we didn't have this information. I think nobody has information of this kind, at least not to using a very large, large amount of data, just for case studies maybe. And what we did was to take the GDP and GDP and take the average and the core funding and core funding and take the averages and come up with a single per specific feature. The third point is second learn. So I program myself a Stata Python interface command for, uh, a, a, so basically you are using Stata, but it's Python doing the job be, behind. And uh, so, uh, this for me was a better because when I was able to run this in this way in Python using scikit-learn, scikit-learn as the basic uh, uh, platform, I was able to generate then the, uh, the average partial effect directly in Stata, which is simpler in my opinion. Uh, at least I'm a bit, a, a bit better Stata programmer than a Python programmer. So for Python, I mainly use uh, functions and I do some very basic stuff for programming. Instead, I can do something more sophisticated. So I managed to, uh, to, uh, to generate this. Uh, and also, if you want, there, is, there are two Stata uh, commands that I carried out and uh, they are going to be published, I hope, in the Stata journal in the very uh, next uh, months. And uh, so it is already available. It's called RMLC Stata and CMLC Stata that for regression and for, a, for classification. So I use that one. And if you want, we can speak about it. Then what about the average partial effect? Um, well, if, uh, the point is that, uh, yes, we, we did this in uh, the average partial effect using Stata. We, we use discrete changes and then we estimate the, uh, uh, the um, the elasticities, okay? That's the main idea. The idea was to generate discrete changes and then uh, elasticity in order to have something which is uh, point-wise 
that, that they can in some way measure, catch the point-wise shape of the tangent. And finally, related topics. I think this is a very interesting uh, point, especially to see whether other people got similar results or results that are comparable some way in terms of the shapes, in terms of the some some of this uh, uh, of the some of the findings that we had. Uh, of course, uh, the the very last thing I want to uh, I want to uh, to stress is that we we have a narrative. We try to provide a narrative, but it's not the only narrative possible. I think that we can be a bit more, I would say, uh, uh, extensive. <laughs> let, me let, let me pass this expression in describing a bit better and to give interpretation of our results. We, uh, we were a bit technical so far and we tried to put a narrative, but of course uh, we are open also to this floor for adding some suggestions or possible alternative uh, narratives or complementary uh, narratives uh, uh, com compared to, to those that we have tried to, to that that we have tried to uh, to make. That, that's our point. Thank you very much, Mike, and thank you to everybody. Okay, thank you. Uh, I want to open the floor for questions. I see also some questions on the chat, but uh, you might want to repeat them uh, openly. Who wants to ask questions? Uh, yes. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, maybe about to about the, respond, Antonio. About the exogenous features in the data frame. Uh, so I, maybe just collect the questions and uh, then you, 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 you can respond. So. Okay, for exogenous features, uh, the exogenous uh, feature, the, the exogenous characteristics are uh, in our case, GDP, the number of students, uh, um, uh, usually endogenous variables uh, are the attributes generated within a system, within a network. In this case, in our case, are the, um, the, the between the centrality and the, the, um, the jacquard coefficient, okay? Uh, usually the exogenous uh, features, in our case, GDP, um, number of students, uh, um, then uh, we have, uh, uh, I don't remember now the um, the, 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 um, the mean citation score, uh, and these are the the, 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 the exogenous variable we have uh, we have used. The, the difference is that the endogenous variable are uh, created within the network. Okay, the centrality measure based on the, the, the centrality, for example, of uh, of a network within uh, the, the R and D. Uh, the, the joint R and D program. Okay, uh, Joe. Okay. There is another question about the cross validation K fold. Yes. What did you use for cross validation? K fold or yes, K fold cross validation with 10, 10 folds, ten folds, which is of course it took. Uh, I want to say it took. Uh, it, it, it was it took a uh, uh, one entire night to get the results. So. Was uh, uh, was quite uh, quite a long uh, long job, <laughs> and uh, finally, yes, um, ten folds is the very standard. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to give the opportunity to ask more questions. I have a few, but I will retain mine for. Uh... Somebody wants to ask questions. Otherwise, I have a, a couple of questions. Yes. Of course, not from a technical perspective. My statistical knowledge is well below what would be needed to discuss this point. But uh, my first question is, could you reflect on the advantage of, this, uh, uh, of your methods? Because there are many other methods in uh, social network analysis and especially the inferential methods like exponential random graph models and similar models. Uh, so oh, it might be important to, to understand the take home of this. My second question relates exactly to the pairs characteristics. You said, for example, you took the average of characteristics over pairs. Uh, I, I would suspect that to, to look to homophily, you, you should look also to the difference between pairs. 
uh, whether, for example, universities are of very different levels of reputation, uh, etc. And the third question is about your results to the budget, which looks interesting. But my uh, question is, did you check that the effect you find for social sciences is not simply due that when the budget, in, the, the large budgets are due to the presence of medical faculties, of natural sciences faculties, so what you see is in reality the effect that the larger budget as implies a decreasing share of the budget for social sciences. So the effect is just generated by a compositional effect. These are my very unreasonable questions. Um, I can answer the first question and Joe, if you want to. Uh, okay, yes, um, we use this, uh, um, okay, we, um, the added value of this, uh, um, uh, of this uh, test, uh, the, the, we use different uh, machine learning uh, algorithms. Um, for example, there is a stochastic actor oriented model uh, as a, a problem. When we use large uh, data, we have a, a large number of uh, um, of, uh, of links in this case, because the, the unit of analysis, uh, of analysis is the link in this case. Uh, uh, stochastic actor oriented model works on binary, okay? Uh, or uh, unweighted, um, for example, um, uh, data, okay? And uh, um, this type of model is very uh, sensible to changing links. To the variance of links between the different uh, years. Um, for example, in exponential random graph model, we can uh, um, have uh, um, th this type of problem when we use the longitudinal data. Okay, uh, in the exponential random graph model, for example, we can have a problem of uh, um, of the generation. Okay, because we when we have a lot of uh, links that change over the years, we can have the, uh, this type of, uh, of problem um, when you use uh, exponential random graph model or temporal exponential random graph model, okay? Uh, um, the, 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 added, the added value in this case is that we can um, exploit machine learning to, um, to, uh, to, to analyze huge um, uh, quantity of data. Okay, this is uh, this is my opinion. Consider considering the 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 the, the, the other um, models in network analysis or in network science. Yeah. Usually, in few words, it's better to use this type of techniques when we have a lot of data. When we have more data. Uh, okay. Uh, for uh, the question raised by you, uh, uh, by, uh, Benedetto, is a very is very relevant because the compositional uh, structure of the pairs is extremely important, extremely relevant, and this can be also be partly partly I would say I'm not sure 100 percent, but partly leading to some bias in our results. Maybe I mean when we're considering a pair with a very high level of um, of uh, a, uh, of core funding, we cannot disentangle whether one of the two uh, pairs, one of the two nodes are particularly high where the other is uh, particularly small. On average, we believe that as long as the, 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 the level of the core funding is going to increase, it is very likely that the two uh, nodes are getting bigger and bigger in terms of co-funding. That's more or less what we, on average, we can, we, can, uh, uh, we, we can suggest. But of course, the, the, the analysis of the compositional effect possibly might be very interesting. And in fact, Antonio, I think uh, that we have to take the suggestion of uh, Benedetto and look uh, um, a bit more into the data to see this composition of, uh, of the pairs and also composition of the first, but also of the different uh, uh, subdomains, I would say, uh, because there are subdomains that can matter in driving these results. This is something that we should uh, explore a bit better, in fact. 
Yes, uh, only only one thing. Yes, it's um, a good point, uh, but I think it's uh, very very difficult to to, to separate and the, the different subfields uh, in this uh, sense. Um, we can try, but uh, it's uh, um, and the different type of universities, uh, for example, medical universities or uh, polytechnic universities, something like that, maybe. Uh, maybe there is a um, yes. Maybe in in later we have uh, yes, this we type have of information, uh, right? So you have uh, for sure you have for um, most universities the division of students by field of education and training. For some, you have also the distribution of staff, which would be better. Mm, okay. No, okay. Okay. But uh, your question is uh, it's very clear. And it's, uh, we can never look at this composition components. It is irrelevant. Yes, maybe in the next step, uh, I think it's possible to consider. Uh, it's relevant when you start looking to results for si single fields, of course, not necessarily in the aggregate. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, just for, I forgot to say one important thing that uh, when we showed the uh, the uh, average partial effect and the, the graph, uh, we use uh, uh, we use the super learner. In other words, we uh, put together the results for each single learner weighted by the accuracy level. So I forgot to say that just for for you to know because otherwise it was a bit mysterious. <laughs> the, and the way which we got this um, these patterns. Thank you. Uh, are there additional questions? So if not, uh, we had again a very interesting and uh, timely seminar on an important uh, topic. And uh, since it does not end here, uh, I thank you, Alessia, for announcing the next seminar. It's the 6th of April, same time. It will be on uh, sustainable development goals and uh, on the analysis of how they are communicated, uh, uh, as far as I remember, in scientific publications. Presenter Barbara Lancio Barantes, University of Leeds, uh, and discussant Ismail Raffles, University of Leiden. And you know how much. Uh, sustainable development goals and their analysis is becoming highly topical for uh, science and innovation policy. So thanking you and thanking especially the presenters and the discussant for their contribution. Uh, I wish you a pleasant afternoon. Thank you very much to everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank for, you very much, uh, Benedetto. Thank you very much. Thank you to Mike and thank you to Benedetto. Mike, yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.